friends, colleagues, we are gathered here today to talk about one of the weirdest mother to ever be a billionaire, which is saying something. Elon Musk, and I, I'm gonna go through his very weird history at first here, right? Because I want to preface this by showing his mental faculties, his thought processes are not those of a rational and healthy mind. And that is not in a way of like, oh, because he's just, he's such a genius. Like he just uh, knows nothing but masterful gambits. This is not the case. More often than not, his success is based entirely on luck or the hard work of other people that he just takes credit for. He is maybe more so than Alex Jones, more so than Graham Linehan, more so than Kanye West even, gives off the distinct air, the odor of divorced dad energy. And as we're gonna talk about in a little bit, he might be one of the worst fathers, like on the planet. This is from sky.com. Uh, Kiwi TP, I hate this dude uh, more than Trump. He really rubs me the wrong way. That's because Trump is also a weirdo, but Trump is genuinely a weirdo about it. Like Trump is, Trump also has personality. Like that's, that's a thing that Elon is lacking. Uh, Elon has a false sense of confidence that you can see very quickly crumbles under almost any pressure. Like, he seems to get this sense of purpose from people on the internet holding him up, sending him fan art, uh, always being in his mentions and replies, which is essentially kind of why I think he bought Twitter. Um, here's, okay, here's a favorite one. November 2023, he promoted an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Uh, the Tesla chief agreed with a post on November uh, 16th of November that falsely claimed Jewish people were stoking hatred against white people saying the user who referenced the great replacement conspiracy theory was speaking the actual truth. This is really funny because the daily wire who's he's super chummy with got in contact with him and like had him do like a Holocaust museum, uh, trip and everything. And that was what changed his mind. Not like actually doing any research in the subject whatsoever. Like he just got conspiracy pilled by a different right wing source. It's great. You love to see it. Musk was accused of promoting a long debunked conspiracy theory, which alleged high profile Democrats ran a pedophile abuse ring from a Washington pizza restaurant. For those of you who don't know, Comet Ping Pong uh, was circulated by so many people in QAnon circles, and I believe Alex Jones as well, uh, that resulted in one very unwell person shooting up the place. Nobody died, thankfully, but it, it has been proven that like the child abuse ring in the basement does not, does not exist. It just, it does not exist. Uh, this is this is also an important thing to note, is as Elon, and we'll, we'll hear him talk, uh, actually I'm not going to play his interview about his daughter, but we will talk about what he says later and how he joined the war on the woke mind virus. The man is so easy to sway to things that he already basically wants to believe. Like he doesn't seem to, at least when he came into Twitter, he didn't seem to know anything about like anti-Semitic conspiracy theories which is why you see him doing things like sharing anti-Semitic conspiracy theories because he doesn't understand the undertones there. He doesn't understand the history behind these conspiracies. He just understands that latching on to a right-wing direction has increased his popularity. And with that popularity comes more sycophants that can help him alleviate what I can only imagine is a massive, unending, bottomless pit of insecurity that gnaws at him in the middle of the night. Which is what I, I really hope. That's, that's, that's just, that could just be me thinking wishfully. Elon Musk confirms he's been role-playing as a toddler for years. This was April 9th of this year. A 108-page deposition of Elon Musk went public on Monday as first reported by HuffPost. I do want to open that. The deposition occurred when the billionaire discussed his strangely alternate X accounts. One of the accounts filed in the case is Ermin Musk, according to HuffPost, which is long suspected be a Musk burner where he role plays as his toddler. The two hour deposition is part of a lawsuit that alleges Musk falsely accused a 22 year old Jewish man of participating in a neo-Nazi brawl. 
The Wayback re Machine reveals several strange deleted tweets Musk shared from this account, such as, quote, I will finally turn three on May 4th, which is the actual birth date and age of his son, X Ash A12, which is how you pronounce that. Other deleted tweets are, for the love of God, can someone follow me? As well as, quote, do you like Japanese girls? And lastly, quote, I wish I was old enough to go to nightclubs. They sound so fun. Musk references another alternate account in the deposition listed as, quote, baby smoke 9000 in the court transcription. No such account exists on X, though it could be a typo referring to Baby Smurf 9000, another long suspected Elon burner. A Medium article from October 2023 says Elon confirmed this to be his alt in an X spaces. That account is still active today with its last tweet on April 4th. Musk also made broader admissions about his failures with X, which has plummeted in value since his takeover in 2022, saying he, quote, may have done more to financially impair the social media site than help it. No shit. Musk also confirmed that he once used a burner account on X seemingly to roleplay as his toddler's son. And we got, we got my boy, the goat, the god, the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Bankston. And here, God, I would love to, I would love to have Mark on um, some time to talk about this stuff because everything... Everything he touches is just so good. Um, for those who don't know, Mark Bankston was also also represented the Sandy Hook parents in the Alex Jones uh, trial. And he is just an amazing take-no-shit lawyer who is masterful when it comes to catching people in like rhetorical traps and getting them to admit shit that they didn't want to admit. Um, just wonderful, wonderful work here. A billionaire's fact-checking process. Here's here's a good one. Here's a good one. As we're as we're going to get into what Elon thinks about the woke mob. Contrary to his earlier statements, Musk suggested later on in the deposition that he researches discourse before he joins that. Bullshit. If you care about the truth, you have to go look about it. Musk's own testimony reveals he did little to seek out the truth. Quote, would it be fair for me to say that other than the tweets that you interacted with, you did not secure other information about this unmasked brawler? Bankston asked, asked at one point. All right, I'm, I'm going to try and do my, my Mark Bankston impression because he has, just ha has a really like authoritative, exasperated tone, like a disappointed coach. Would it be fair for me to say that other than the tweets that you interacted with, you did not secure other information about this masked brawler? Bankston asked at one point. I don't recall securing other information, Musk responded. During his testimony, Musk criticized what he called the traditional legacy news industry while lauding X's Community Notes, a website tool that allows users to add corrections or additional context to misleading or untrue posts. Musk called Community Notes the best system on the internet for fact checking and said he tagged Community Notes in his post referencing Brody as a show of good faith. <sighs> Musk downplayed the number and argued that his post was merely a reply to someone else, which attracted less viewership than his own post would. Chat, chat, chat. Walk with me here. Before we get into the rest of Elon's incredibly weird shit, I want to talk about... <laughs> yes, uh, raising your NG, it absolutely is. Where apparently Elon Musk, at some point in the past, tried to ingratiate himself into the baby fur community of San Francisco. Right now, this appears to be the only kind of like photo evidence. I do not know what he's doing. I think he is uh, one of the things that he's rolling a joint. It, what I, I'm not sure what the difference between a furry and a baby fur is, and I'm... Chad, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really care. I'm, I am not. I, I don't really know. I don't really care. Um, however. Do you identify as a furry? In April of 2019, Elon Musk responded. Fur curious. No. Baby fur is when a furry has a diaper fetish. I don't want it.
Dare just want to go back to like a couple seconds before you knew something. Just like knock yourself out so you wouldn't know it. I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. As long as everybody is consenting and of legal age and nobody is getting hurt. Via Candias, go with God. But bear in mind, I want you to keep his feelings on children, impersonating children, and baby furs, alleged feelings on baby furs in mind as we talk about this next part. Because this is going to be, I promise, all of these tangents, they are, they are going towards the focal point. Just just stay with me for a little bit. Okay? We will, we'll get there. 2024, June 21st. Elon Musk's $10 million pronatalism donation is a cover for eugenic support from Jalopnik. Elon is a fan of having lots of kids, so long as they don't go having opinions of their own. In fact, Musk loves kids so much that he thinks you should have one. Have a few. Just make sure you're the type who should be having kids first. This is effectively the driving idea behind the Population Wellbeing Initiative, a project out of the University of Texas that Musk established with a $10 million donation. It's the idea behind Musk's constant birth rate alarmism on social media, a topic he has even paired with racist great replacement theory. A new Bloomberg report showed just how deep Musk's ties to the pronatalist movement go. On Twitter for, for months now, he has been talking up for, for I feel like years at this point, actually. Uh, not so subtly hinting. Not necessarily the the He's not so much a great replacement guy as he is a covering great replacement rhetoric by talking about declining birth rates and and the collapse of birth rates. Which, if you watch this channel or you watch other conspiracy theories, you know those two generally, those talking points go hand in hand. From Jalopnik, if you played unhealthy close attention, you may have also noticed a pattern. It's coming rare for us to get through an interview or meet a world leader without bringing up babies, sometimes with his young son, young son X in tow. In Musk's mind, global fertility rates are not just a crisis, but the crisis. In 2022, he tweeted that a collapsing birth rate is the biggest danger civilization faces by far. 2023, he told Tucker Carlson, once you have birth control and abortions and whatnot, now you can still satisfy the limbic instinct, but not procreate. He added, will civilization end with a bang or a whimper? Well, it's currently trying to end with a whimper in adult diapers, which is depressing as hell, end quote. I want you to think about, by the way, that... He, he said adult diapers right after the baby first stuff Elon right after the impersonating your kid stuff Elon I, I'm not saying I'm just saying hey hey Elon Elon I'm just asking questions okay I'm just this is this is how the the free flow of information goes. I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. That's a that's a very interesting word choice you pick there. Adult diapers. Hmm. The facts don't seem to have put Musk's mind at ease. He fathered at least twelve children, six of them in the past five years, three with the musician Grimes, and three with Neuralink Corp's director of special projects Siobhan Zillis, including one who hasn't been known to the public until now. That child was born earlier this year, according to people familiar with the matter, who would only discuss it on condition of anonymity. Zillis declined to comment, and Musk didn't respond to inquiries. In 2021, Musk anonymously donated $10 million, uh, according to his foundation's tax returns. This donation, Musk's largest ever, established a research group called the Population Wellbeing Initiative. Publicly, it says the mission is to quantitative social science research. Privately, it is said it aims to legitimize the idea that, quote, low fertility is a key threat to long-run flourishing. Musk's goal through PWI is to encourage higher birth rates in hopes of stemming some sort of sudden population collapse, a collapse that scientists largely agree is unrealistic, bordering on impossible. Again, remember, this is the guy. He said, oh, yeah, yeah I, I do my research, but he very fucking clearly does not. His intense focus on such an unlikely outcome isn't without precedent, with Musk ties to the ethical altruist movement in mind, a link Bloomberg, Bloomberg also noted, the fear-based approach echoes the EA approach of long-termism. It's a offshoot of utilitarianism focused on doing the greatest good for the greatest number of people, specifically how rich people can best donate their money to empirically help more people rather than focusing on causes they simply care about. It expands to cover potential future people within that utilitarian viewpoint, arguing that they deserve protection most of all, and that's something that threatens all of them, no matter how unlikely, like the myth of population collapse, must be fought against all odds. Abigail Thorne has a great description. God, Abigail is slaying in that video. 
Bloomberg talks about the eugenics of pronatalism in broad strokes, pointing out that the movement often bends towards preserving specific races or traits, but we can look to Musk's history to theorize about his personal desired outcomes. From Mother Jones, Musk is amplifying users who will incorporate cherry-picked data and misleading graphs into their argument as to why people of European descent are biologically superior, showing how fringe accounts, like user i slash o, experience a drastic jump in followers after Musk shares their tweets. The account has even thanked Musk for raising awareness. People are more susceptible, quote, people are more susceptible to simpler chats with race and IQ than they are to really complicated stuff. Will Stancil, a lawyer and research fellow at the, uh, at the Institute on Metropolitan Opportunity, told Garrison in a video interview. He added, quote, this is the most basic statistical error in the book. Correlation does not equal causation. Musk has long held the idea that C-sections lead to higher intelligence, a theory refuted by scientific studies. There's more to his beliefs than that. In the same tweets, Musk ties assortive mating assertative mating to a massive rise in exceptionally smart people. Assertative mating being the tendency for like to attract like. Uh, in a in a threads post, when the, this was before the MSNBC thing, but I'm not going to give any more air. If you want, the, the interview's out there. You can go watch it if you want. But Elon Musk being the insensitive piece of shit that he is, um, went on Jordan Peterson's show to talk about how the woke mind virus stole, in his words, his son, who is now a trans woman, and how he was tricked into signing documents. Turns out all of this is bullshit, as we'll see here. Uh, the first time Vivian spoke out about this, Musk said he vowed to destroy the woke mind virus after he was tricked into signing papers for puberty blockers. Vivian responded in a series of posts on threats, quote, he's desperate for attention and validation from an army of degenerate red-pilled incels and pick who are quick to give it to him. Go touch some fucking grass. You love to see it. You love to see it. From NBC News, Elon Musk's trans daughter in first interview says he berated her for being queer as a child. In an exclusive interview, Vivian Jenna Wilson said her father's recent statements, including that she is not a girl, inspired her to speak out. Quote, I'm not just going to let that slide. Look, like, yeah, not a girl. Okay, idiot. Wilson, 20, in an exclusive interview with, interview with NBC, responded to comments Musk made Monday about her and her trans identity. On social media and in an interview, Musk said she was, quote, not a girl and was figuratively dead, and he alleged that he had been tricked into authorizing trans-related medical treatment when she was 16. Wilson said that Musk hadn't been tricked and that after initially having hesitated, he knew what was going on. He knew what he was doing when he agreed to her treatment, which required consent from her parents. Musk's recent statements crossed the line, she said. Quote, I think he was under the assumption that I wasn't going to say anything and I would just let this go unchallenged, Wilson said in a phone interview, which I'm not going to do because if you're going to lie about me blatantly to an audience of millions, I'm not just going to let that slide. Which is what he, by the way, that's what he is used to. He is not used to pushback. He's used to just lying and fucking getting away with it. That's, that's all he does. Now, here's, here's the really interesting part, because this is one of the first times, if, if you'll recall earlier when they were listing off the 12 children that he's had with, like, multiple different women, a lot of them just kind of pop out and aren't seen publicly. Like, X Ash, the one that he completely fucked over by giving a stupid name, is one of the only kids he's really ever been public about. A lot of them are, like, just kind of hidden, like, technically, there's only 12 kids that we know about. There very easily could be more. And along with that comes, we don't get a lot of looks at how he is as a father. And this interview from Vivian is one of the first times that we really see that. And I wholeheartedly believe everything she says here. Wilson said that for as long as she could remember, Musk hasn't been a supportive father. She said he was rarely, pro excuse me, she said he was rarely present in her life, leaving her and her siblings to be cared for by their mother or by nannies, even though Musk had joint custody, and she said Musk berated her when she was when he was present. He was cold, she said. He's very quick to anger. He is uncaring and narcissistic. All things, by the way, borne out and shown publicly by his public persona. Like these these are not these are not stretches for for Elon's personality. Like you can absolutely see these things. 
Wilson said that when she was a child, Musk would harass her for exhibiting feminine traits and pressure her to appear more masculine, including by pushing her to deepen her voice as early as elementary school. I was in fourth grade. We went on this road trip that I didn't know was actually just an advertisement for one of the cars. I don't remember which one. And he was constantly yelling at me viciously because my voice was too high. It was cruel. Musk didn't respond to a request for comment. Wilson and her twin, bro twin brother were born to Musk's first wife, author Justine Musk. The couple divorced in 2008, and Wilson said her parents shared custody between their homes in the LA area. Musk, 53, is among the wealthiest people in the world through his stakes in Tesla, where he's CEO, and in SpaceX, which he founded. He has also become a significant political figure, having endorsed Donald Trump this month for another term in the White House. Musk has 12 children. Now a college student studying languages, Wilson was, has never granted an interview before and has largely stayed out of public view. She did, however, attract attention in 2022 when she sought court approval in California to change her name and in the process denounced her father. Quote, I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape or form, she said in the court filing. She told NBC News that at the time she was surprised by the media attention to the court filing, which she submitted when she was 18. She said in the interview that she stands by what she wrote, though she said she might have tried to be more eloquent had she known the coverage it would get. Wilson said she hadn't spoken to Musk in about four years and she refused to be defined by him. I would like to emphasize one, excuse me, I would like to emphasize what emphasize why why is that hard to say i would like to emphasize one thing i am an adult i am 20 years old i'm not a child my life should be defined by my own choices F based fucking based now this is what musk said musk threw a spotlight on wilson on monday by speaking out uh, speaking about their relationship in a video interview with psychologist and conservative commentator Jordan Peterson streamed on X, which, by the way, I, I feel like I, NBC, I know you're trying to like toe the line or whatever, but you're doing a real disservice to the person that the interview was with by um, not pointing out Jordan Peterson, famous uh, meat coma benzo addict. Just, just saying, just saying. Not that there's anything wrong with being an addict and anybody who is facing that struggle should seek help. Um, however, there is something wrong with it when you think you have an authority to give other people advice on their lives, and especially when it comes to medicine. You hack fraud motherfucker. Uh, in a post on X, Musk said Monday that Wilson was, quote, born gay and slightly autistic, and that at age four, she fit certain gay stereotypes, such as loving musicals and using the exclamation fabulous to describe certain clothing. Wilson told NBC News that the anecdotes aren't true, though she said she did act stereotypically feminine in other ways as a child. So, like, straight up, because Elon is the most easily led rube in the world and will believe literally any narrative that's fed him, here he is buying into the gender critical and turf argument that all trans women are secretly just gay boys who have been, I guess, fucking transition by big medical because they hate gay boys i don't it's it's not a real it, it doesn't make sense it doesn't don't try don't think about it too hard wilson also addressed Musk's recent comments in a series of posts thursday on the social media app threads he doesn't know what i was like as a child because he quite simply wasn't there and in the little time he was i was relentlessly harassed for my femininity and queerness I've been reduced to a happy little stereotype, she continued. I think that says a lot about how he views queer people and children in general. In recent years, Musk has taken a hard right turn into conservative politics and been waging a campaign against transgender people and policies designed to support them. This month, he said he was pulling his businesses out of California to protest a new state law that bars schools from requiring that trans kids be outed to their parents. Uh, on X, Musk has for year cri years criticized trans rights, including medical treatments for trans identifying minors and use of pronouns if they are different from what would be used at birth. He has promoted anti-trans content and called for arresting people who provide trans care to minors. Musk told Peterson that Wilson's gender transition had been the motivation for his push into conservative politics. So this is, this again, tie all of this together in a little bow because this perfectly sums up why Elon has pushed so far to the right, the, the woke mind virus. And you tie this in to the way that he doesn't view children as their own people with their own internal thought processes, their own internal worlds, aspirations, ideas, and dreams. He quite literally just views them as an extension of himself and that they should be forced to be how he wants them to be. Like, that 
one of them decided to break containment and God bless her, go on and do her own thing because she seems like she is living a very happy and productive and fruitful life. Yet, that was enough to cause him to snap. And I think so much of that shows what a thin-skinned, frail, emotional child he really is. Wilson was also mentioned in a biography of Musk by author Walter Isaacson, a book she told to NBC News was inaccurate and unfair to her. The book refers to her politics as radical Marxism, quoting Musk's sister-in-law, Christiana Musk, but Wilson said she's not a Marxist, though she does oppose wealth inequality. The book also calls her by her middle name, Jenna. Wilson said Isaacson never reached out to her directly ahead of publication. A phone interview Thursday, Isaacson said he had reached out to Wilson through family members. Christiana Musk didn't immediately respond to requests for comment. Wilson told NBC that for years she had considered speaking out about Musk's behavior as a parent and as a person, but that she could no longer remain silent after his comments Monday. She said she had never received an explanation for why her father spent so little time with her and her siblings, behavior that she now views as strange. Quote, he was there, I want to say, maybe 10% of the time. That's generous. He had half custody and he fully was not there. It was just a fact of life at the time, so I don't think I realized just how normal, abnormal of an experience it was. The pandemic wasn't a chance, was a chance to escape Musk's cruelty, she said. When COVID hit, I was like, I'm not going over there, she said. It was basically very lucky timing. Musk told Peterson in the interview that he had been tricked into signing documents authorizing trans-related medical treatment for Wilson. An allegation, Wilson says, isn't true. Quote, I was essentially tricked into signing documents for one of my older boys, using her birth name. This was before I had really any understanding of what was going on, and we had COVID going on. Adding that he was told she might commit suicide. This is another turf talking point that they like to bring up. Wilson said that in 2020, when she was still a minor, she wanted to start treatment for severe gender dysphoria, but needed the consent of both parents under California law. She said that her mother was supportive, but Musk initially wasn't. She said she texted him about it for a while. Quote, I was trying to do this for months, but he said I had to go meet with him in person. At that point, it was very clear that we both had a very distinct disdain for each other. She said she took puberty blockers before she switched to hormone replacement therapy treatments that she said were life-saving for her and many other transgender people. They saved lives. Let's not get that twisted. They definitely allowed me to thrive. She said she believed the requirements to obtain such treatments remain onerous with teenagers pressured to say they're at extreme risk of self-harm before they'll be approved. She said she felt judged by Musk and Peterson in the Monday interview for not being at high enough risk in their eyes. Quote, I've basically been put into a point where to a group of people, I have to basically prove whether or not I was suicidal or not to warrant medically transitioning. It's absolutely mind boggling. I'm so glad she did this interview. I'm so glad. And I would love to talk to her in person. I would love to. I have an idea, actually, for um, a project that if I if I can ever get if it, hey if anybody knows how to contact Vivian Musk, um, fucking email me because I would love to uh, reach out to her because uh, I have a fantastic project idea. Through all of this, I hope I've painted a picture for you that Elon Musk is a very strange person who does not view things like procreation and children in a healthy or normal way. He doesn't see them as their own unique organisms. He doesn't see them as sentient beings. He sees them as part of this weird eugenics plan to pass on his genes to another generation, to, to prevent uh, the, the crumbling of civilizational collapse, which isn't a, a real concern to begin with. Now, is he just an idiot? It's, it's a lot, lot of evidence pointing in that specific direction. But this article, I feel, kind of sums up a lot of what we've been talking about. I feel Elon Musk is a deeply insecure person. And that's where so many of these things, from his push to the right, to his bizarre role-playing, to even his odd predilection for infantilization, whether that's the toddler role-playing, his use of adult diapers and metaphors, or allegedly his inclusion or attempted inclusion into a baby fur community. It all comes around to, I think, the fact that Elon Musk is a deeply, deeply sad, insecure person who just wants to be loved and adored with fawning praise all the time. 
And I think the right wing gives him that. On July 22nd, Elon Musk appeared on a Jordan, on Jordan Peterson's Daily Wire funded podcast for a wide ranging and often unhinged conversation. The fact Musk is appearing in such places show us how far down the rabbit hole of right wing extremism he's gone. But this was but there was a brief exchange in the interview where Musk misgendered and dead named his trans daughter that caught people's attention. Do, do, do. We just talked about all of that. Not long after that news broke, Musk shared a photo on Twitter of himself visiting the Pope alongside the rest of the living children he had with his first wife, Justine Wilson, on what seemed like a hastily organized European vacation. Walter Isaacson later revealed in his 2023 uh, biography that the four sons were upset he'd shared the photo to the degree that one of them broke down in tears. One of the sons asked him not to tweet out pictures of them without their permission, Isaacson wrote. Quote, Musk d got depressed, dropped off the group chat, and a few minutes later sent word they were returning to the U.S. Like, he, he is literally a fucking, he's a child. He's a fucking child. A few months later, Musk was interviewed in the Financial Times and blamed his daughter's decision to distance him, herself from him on a neo-Marxist takeover of elite schools and universities. Quote, it's full-on communism and a general sentiment that if you're rich, you're evil. I mean, he's not really disproving it, though. Like, I mean, buddy, you gotta be, you gotta be a good, like, example of how that's not the case. Uh, Kenny Penn's, it's so weird how passing on genes become, genes becomes their end goal. It's because they, they view themselves as, like, literally, like, it, hey, Musk has railed on in the past about not wanting to, to be on public transport, about how cities are so dirty. He's also been very openly racist and allowed uh, racism to happen in his workplace, even though he's known about it, which is, I believe, led to, yeah, EEOC sues Tesla for racial harassment and retaliation. It might be, who, who can say if Elon Musk is racist? He probably is. But I think it also comes down to the fact that he literally sees himself as superior to other people. Like, he literally views himself as an above average not above average, far above average, a, a ubermensch in the modern era. It doesn't matter how many unflattering side profile pictures you'll take of him. It doesn't matter how uh, bad beach shots you'll get of him, proving that he's far from a physical specimen. It doesn't matter how many massive billion dollar foibles he'll make with, with Twitter stock prices fucking plummeting advertisers fleeing in droves as it becomes a cesspool for Nazis. He has convinced himself and the people, the sycophants around him that feed on him like leeches have helped to convince him that he is a brilliant mind, that he is doing something good in the world. And so people like him and that freak couple, they believe that it is part of their duty to continue because they, because they are so exceptional that they need to continue making more people just like them. Other people that are also exceptional. He's talked repeatedly about the need for, quote, smart people to have more children. Arguments that have direct links to eugenic rhetoric of the past. More recently, Musk has embraced the white replacement conspiracy theory that asserts certain elites, often Jewish ones, are orchestrating mass migration to replace the white populations of Western countries with non-whites to change their demographics and political dynamics. Despite his warnings against population decline, his increasing vocal opposition to migration across the southern U.S. border and the Mediterranean Sea paired with his embrace of far-right conspiracies shows very clearly it's only certain demographics whose population he wants to see expand. Interesting uh, little little foible in the uh, anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about like population density and control is if Jews already control all the media and the world and the government and everything, why do they need to change the political demographics? Like why 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 would they need to change that if they already if they already control everything? Why do they need to change things so they can control things? Musk has personally embraced a worldview called long-termism that argues addressing global poverty or hunger aren't effective uses of humanity's collective resources, which should instead go to the interests of elites, things like space travel and merging human brains with computers. That's supposedly justified as a way to guarantee the future of the human species, but it's not the only part of the plan. By the way, he said we would already be on Mars, by the way, and we fucking aren't. Like, no, nobody really seems to, to ever bring that up to him. Like, the amount of times that he's promised shit that just, like, straight up never materialized... 
even as somebody who he so desperately wants to be like the Tony Stark figure that early 2010s nerds like tried to make him out to be. And it's like if like if he made an Iron Man suit, it would crash into a wall on the first test run and he would break his neck. Like he's he does not have that dog in him. Elon Musk is a bad parent. When you wor view the world through such a lens, it's not hard to see how you can become hostile to decisions or policies that reduce fertility. Last year, Musk told Tucker Carlson that he felt birth control and abortions had a negative effect on procreation and that humans hadn't yet evolved to accommodate for it. His statements against trans people, including his own daughter, can be seen as pure bigotry, but they're also linked to his pronatalist views. Once someone, especially one of his children, loses their ability to reproduce, they are dead to him. Musk's daughter should not have put up with her father making increasingly insulting and belittling statements about her. Luckily, she does have one good parent on her side. After she filed to change her name and her gender, her mother tweeted she was very proud of her daughter, even after what Vivian described as a weird childhood. And to top that off, as if this wasn't enough evidence that Elon Musk is emotionally manipulative, that Elon Musk is completely immature, and wants to exert control over anything, uh, even if it's sentient, has its own internal feelings. He's not just emotionally abusive and controlling. He's also a cold-hearted asshole. As we'll see here, Vivian uh, shared this from Grimes' mom. This is from, from Vivian. Hello everyone, I'm going to forego my standard tone for this because this is important. As you may or may not know, Grimes is currently in a custody battle with Elon over their three children. What you probably don't know is that Elon has been illegally and continuously keeping their children, her children, away from their mother during the most important developmental period in a child's life. Uh, from Alejandro Caraballo, Vivian is speaking about how Al Elon is illegal excuse me vivian is speaking out about how elon is illegally keeping his children with grimes away from her and her family he's off partying in paris while the kids cannot see their mother or their dying great grandmother again from vivian while elon has been irresponsibly partying across the ocean in the very country he's spitting contemptuous poison about grimes children are stuck in a house thousands of miles away without their mother this is potentially irreversibly damaging to a child's psyche and is without question a, a despicable form of abuse. This is not the first time this has happened and if nothing changes, likely not the last. I've only been able to catch glimpses of this from behind the scenes and it has been both horrifying and enraging that no one has been able to do anything about it. I cannot stress this enough, this is illegal. He does not have the custody to be able to do this, yet since Elon has an infinite amount of funds to pull from, he has been able to successfully employ them to take their children away from the mother that they desperately require. This needs to end now. X has been paraded around social media solely for the purpose of boosting his own brand image of responsible father when that could not be further from the truth. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, he is both uncaring and absent while robbing their children of a mother. Please do not let this continue. Thank you. Like, did anybody, after the years of seeing Elon, after his very bizarre public declines, where he appears more and more unhinged, him doing cringy dances and, uh, basically doing like applause moments that nobody applauds for like do you do you remember when really quick here's that and, and you're clarifying this now um but there's a public perception that that was part of a apology tour if you will that this had been said online there was all of the criticism there was advertisers leaving we talked to bob Iger i hope today. they stop you hope uh, don't advertise you don't want them to advertise no what do you mean if, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Well, well, like, you can just tell that he, th like, this is the one of the, when I th see. People on Twitter being like, oh, bro thought he did something. This is this is the exact fucking thing. Like it is it is Ket. Like it it seems like a K-hole. It is just like it has the exact same uh for me it reminds me of people I've seen on Coke, where it's just like this this false sense of confidence that is driven like everybody around them is laughing at them, 
but they think they're laughing with them. So much of it, and it's it's perfectly fitting that he's on Jordan Peterson's podcast, where they can just talk about like basically philosophical and scientific concepts that they have never done any deep reading into, but that they've heard of, you know. And so so Elon Musk can use the word Jungian. And Jordan Peterson can go, well, yes, exactly. And that's that's why it's actually really interesting that, uh, you know, you you represent more the masculine, uh, the dragon of order, whereas whereas the, the trans becoming uh, more feminine represents the, the feminine dragon of chaos. It's, it's very much like like the Jungian. Like, it's it's all, it's just the same bullshit where it's too, I, I, I think I did a tweet about it, where it's just the dumbest motherfuckers at the party. <laughs> One is on uppers. Uh, Elon, one is on downers, Benzos on in Jordan's case, and they're just talking back like past each other. And every time they're just like, "Yeah, totally, man. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey. Oh my gosh, you know what? You know what? We should we should absolutely make a movie. Like, hey, I can write. I can write. Can you write? No, it's it's okay. I got. I know a guy. I can get a producer credit. And the other guy's just like, "Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever? Wow, your eyes are really pretty. Like, they're just." completely not even on the same fucking plane of existence <laughs> you know but they're both just like exactly bro